Hello and welcome to Formation, a weekly conversation for followers of Jesus. My name is Shannon Moore and I'm here with my trusty colleagues. Kara Watts. Renee Hoke. All right, it's so good to be together. Y'all. Always good to be at this table with you two. It is, and here we are finishing up the book of Acts, The gospel, I mean the Gospel of Luke, but we're moving a little beyond that little because we have two more that. weeks of the Gospel of Nobody series that we've been looking at in worship here at University Christian Church. And so uh, we've got a week's worth of good gospel stuff to talk about today. So I say we jump right in. Let's do it. We're at uh, Luke chapter 24, right? Yes, that's gonna, where I am. You're going to start yeah, us off? I'm, I'm going to get us started. And interestingly, when we start this chapter, um, it it seems kind of just like the, I don't want to say run of the mill, uh, you know, the empty tomb story, but it kind of appears like that. But when we really look at it and really break down, particularly this final chapter, um, there's all sorts of stuff going on that we don't see in some of the others. You know, there's there are two reports of finding an empty tomb. Um, there are two post-resurrection uh, narratives that happen where the appearance of Jesus occurs. Um, and so these are very, very distinct. This chapter is very Luke, as we have seen mm. all the way through. And so um, it starts out, and it's really framed kind of around Sabbath, um, around and is, is told in this... Um, kind of chronological order. Here's what happened. Here's what happened next. Um, And it starts, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. Now, stop right there, because the people that are going to see it will catch up with them in just a little, little bit. But in chapter, or I'm sorry, verse 10, it says, now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who, who were there who saw this. And so these are the same names um, that we see early on um, in Luke, talking about the women who help support with their resources, mm-hmm. the ministry of Jesus. And so these are the same women who saw Jesus on the cross. These are just the same women that saw Jesus' body placed in the tomb. And these are the same women who all along have been well, caring for. Red said this, you know, when yeah. he was on the cross that they were with him since Galilee. Right. So... Right. So almost Long the whole term. since chapter yeah. nine of, of Luke when, right. he's, when he started to Jerusalem. Right. And particularly, you know, Mary Magdalene's story where we hear early on that, you know, seven demons were were removed from her. And and just to imagine what that what her life might have been like mm-hmm. um, in that. I, I don't know. It's just a really um, profound way, I think. To hear I would the like story. to call, describe them as disciples. Yeah, in every way possible, correct? Right, right. Not just the women, yes, but the disciples. Yes. In one of the um, commentaries I read, it said, you know, these these women's names did not end up on the list to replace Judas, but in all ways, <laughs> they would have fit every bit of of what what the disciple, what the named male disciples um, mm-hmm. that follow Jesus were like. Um, and, and interestingly, you know, they, they see the angel and they're told, why are you looking, you know, for, for the living among the dead? And don't you remember what Jesus said? And then they say, oh, yes, <laughs> I do remember. Um, I do remember um, what Jesus said. And the words come back to them. Um, and uh, they go off and they tell the story to the disciples and um, picking up in verse 11, but these words seem to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. Mm. Um, and that always makes me mad when I get to that it? verse, an My idle trans- tale. Yeah. What does your translation say? says like nonsense. Yeah. The, <sighs> the Greek word apparently liros, I'm not sure the p- correct way pr- to pronounce it, but it really means kind of like someone who's speaking in delirium, like a rant. And so totally the disciples, dismissed. Not only did they think it was just nonsense, they thought they had lost their, something was wrong. They with had them. really mm-hmm. lost it, um, but it was enough to make Peter get up and and go check go out check what it was out going for on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that brings us kind of that sets up the next the next part of this um, because the disciples have have been hearing you know they hear the story and can you imagine uh, what that might have been like? And I also love how Luke just shifts. Yeah. It's like a movie script. Yeah. And then we pick up with two two people that are walking along the road, and that starts in uh, twenty chapter 24, verse 13. Don't you think that's the most harsh transition or most... <laughs> 
in, right. it, that, in, yeah. that we've seen in Luke. I mean, it, yeah. it really is quite phenomenal, I think. Well, as if Luke had collected, you know, had yeah. five stories to tell. And he's just telling, you know, one after the yeah. other with no transition. Yeah, I right? love it. It's great. Yeah, because we see Peter, he goes home amazed and not sure what to happen. <laughs> what, what's your, you know, what's going mm-hmm. on here? And then on the same day, um, there were two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. It's about seven miles, so they had plenty of time to chat and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. What do you think about that? I don't know. That's the way that's phrased. Sounds like you know Jesus did that. That Jesus mm-hmm. kept them from seeing him. So one of the commentaries that I looked at for this chapter said, "What we're dealing with here, and Luke is really helping us wrestle with it, is what does a resurrected body look like? Mm. I mean, anytime people are hiding and screaming, and is that really you, Jesus? I mean, this is Jesus in his resurrected form, and Luke lingers here." so that we think about, you know, our hope mm-hmm. of resurrection. What does that physically look like? Mm-hmm. Right. And here's Jesus showing up, disappearing, doing, I mean, doing yeah. all kinds of things. This is resurrected Jesus, who must have looked quite a bit different. Mm-hmm. Yes. So maybe it wasn't just a, a, you know, a game. I mean, it wasn't just a trick, a magic trick that they were doing. Jesus really did look Different. different when he spoke they recognized his voice right but yeah. this is the resurrected jesus right and and what i find so fascinating is that that jesus says what are you discussing with it with each other while you walk along and then they proceed to tell the story of jesus which again is one of those things that you know i think is so important about this story is it's the experience that they had and it's the remembering what happened in their time with jesus that then propels this gospel message on. Um, and that kind of brings us well, to where love, you are. Well, I love that they're like, you know, are you the only person that doesn't, <laughs> what's the matter? you're the only you one who hasn't know? heard what's Why, going on? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> How could you not know? Where have you been? Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, they're continuing to walk along. And so it says that uh, Jesus then says to them, I'm at verse 25, you're, you're foolish and slow to believe. Um, didn't the Messiah have to suffer all of these things? And then Jesus starts talking about Moses and the prophets and describing what all, what the Scripture said and and the saying that it was about Himself. They approached the village and Jesus was going to go on. And I love this phrase. They urged Him, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. And there are lots of, um, as a former choir director, there's lots of beautiful settings of choral music um, that you only get to sing once a year, uh, it seems, uh, to this to this text. Um, so he decided to stay with them, and then they went to the table. He took bread, and we hear these very familiar words, um, broke it, gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And you know, we don't talk about that, no. really, that he's just gone. Again, a resurrected body is a different body Mm -hmm. than the one they were used to Mm -hmm. um, beforehand. So maybe that means after we're resurrected, we can disappear like that. (laughs) (laughs) That'll be exciting, won't it? (laughs) To be able to do all of that. I, I just wish, as I'm listening to you talk about this, that I could hear how Jesus, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, um, interpreted scriptures about the things concerning. I, I Wouldn't you love to hear Jesus teach that? We, ha- we have a reference to it, but we don't really have that We don't have that the red letter Jesus. words. Yeah. Right. Yep. Walk along the road and listen to Jesus unpack it. But right. then they said, were not our hearts burning yeah. when he was talking to us and describing the we scriptures to us? knew something was different. Well, and to me, it's that they didn't recognize him until... Until Jesus participated in that ritual that he had left mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. You know, here's this thing that I, that we all participated in, this thing that I left you to remember me by. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until he broke the bread that they knew who he was. That's I just a, think that's so profound. It's a wonderful connection with being at the table every week in yeah. worship 
and that moment in worship where mm -hmm. Jesus is present to all of us right. in a different sort of way because of the the ritual of the mm -hmm. cup and the bread broken. And to even to hear these words, to say them out loud, when he was at the table, he took bread, gave thanks. I mean, it, we hear that we so know that. often. Right. We know that. We know what it means, right. where it came from. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And then they got up and returned to Jerusalem. Now, one of the things I read said, you know, they'd have to run really fast <laughs> in order to have walked seven miles from Jerusalem, had so dinner, have to be in good shape and to get turn back to Jerusalem and all. all in one day. But I bet they were wishing they could disappear <laughs> they could and disappear reappear like again. Jesus. But I guess that's not really the point. But they return to Jerusalem and they they find the eleven and those around them, and they're saying, you know, you know, here's what happened to us, and they're like, yeah, Simon went and he was gone. <laughs> Um, and then they told what happened to them. And so it's just a lot of, can, can you the imagine energy the energy it, yes. in the room and how exciting yeah. everything would, and yeah. what's going to happen next? And then while they're talking, there, there he is. appears There's... again and says, peace be with you. And they were startled and thought they saw a ghost. And he said, why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And so he showed them his hands, his feet, and while they still did not believe it, so they had believed before they saw him. They were they were in that mode of believing until they saw him, and then they didn't believe again. Don't you think that was kind of the reality was weaving in and out of maybe this? No, I don't think so. And then, I mean, how can they, can what do you do just, with, how do you wrap your mind around right. what's going on? Right, yeah, that's what I imagine. They're just trying to find actual points to say mm -hmm. that, yes. But then when it actually happens to them and they're all together, surely this is... And then I love it. how Jesus just is like, you know what? Do you have anything to eat? I'm hungry. <laughs> hungry. Uh, I love that. So and that's another a, way that Luke is trying to help us understand a resurrected body can still can still be hungry. It can disappear be and hungry appear. hungry and eat something and you don't see it going down because he's invisible and, you know, it's just all of this. What does it mean, that resurrected body of Jesus? And so he ate and then he did the same thing that he did with the two at Emmaus. He opened up their minds to the scripture. This is what was written that the Messiah would be killed and on the third day rise. Um, I am going to send what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So I, I mean, wanna... an eventful day. I mean, we think about, yes. we think about the tomb uh -huh. and Easter, but in Luke's gospel, it's an all, all day. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Because volume one of Luke has it all in one day. Mm -hmm. Volume two has 40 days. Let's look at that. Oh. Let's look at that. We're going to get a little bit into Acts. But first, let's look at chapter 24, the last uh, three verses. Would you read that, Shannon? Sure. Uh, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. So interesting, the role of blessing, that that was one thing. And, and so I, I read commentaries really talking about um, Jesus blessing, the significance of it then, and how the church continues uh, to be a place of blessing mm -hmm. now. But you will notice that we actually have, we don't have a lot of detail. We'd like more detail than this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was carried up into heaven. This is the only place where words of ascension actually appear in Scripture. None of the the rest of the Gospels, except Mark, kind of allude to it, but Luke is the one who um, talks about ascension. And the, co and the point is made that um, there's some symmetry to Luke's writing because Luke begins in the temple mm -hmm. with Zechariah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Luke ends in the temple with the disciples gathered, waiting for power from on high. Uh, both of those, and one of the uh, one of the commentaries said, opening scene in Luke, God is at work and something marvelous is about to happen. That's the Zachariah story mm -hmm. leading to the birth of Jesus. Same thing here. 
God is at work and something miraculous, Pentecost, is about to happen. So let's turn to the beginning of Acts, also written by the same author as Luke, also addressed to Theophilus, which we had at the beginning. But let's look at um, what happens that's different here is the 40 days. So would you, Kara, would you mind reading? Go ahead and read one through three. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught about and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. Mm. All right, let's go down to the... Mm. Okay, go down to nine and read 9 and 9 through 11. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So they're going to wait in Jerusalem from power on the power coming from on high, Jesus told them that. But we have 40 days for Jesus to get them ready for his departure versus 24 hours. Or less. Yes. Yeah, (laughs) a lot less in Luke. So Uh, one of the the commentaries that I read said that uh, manuscripts, early manuscripts of uh, Luke and Acts actually eliminated verse 51b in Luke Luke chapter 24 about ascending there oh, so that it so wouldn't that it would conflict, conflict with, with, there wouldn't be a conflict with mm-hmm. the Acts version. So they actually left it out and then then realized they weren't being faithful to the original text. So they had, isn't that, isn't that funny to think of the manuscript where we're going, yeah, I think of all the things that we proofread when <laughs> right. we're working on church stuff. Oh, let's leave <laughs> that let's out right that there. Let's take that out. And, that's and confusing. The, the important meaning of that. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot. And I have to mention, as I always do when this text comes up, I just, it always makes me laugh when the angels say, why are you looking up in the sky? And I just want, I want the disciples to say, because someone just flew up into <laughs> Because it. Jesus. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> but it's sort of like, don't waste any time here. Come on, let's get Quit on with that. it. So yep. you have this great spirit of anticipation, I think. As you, as you begin Acts, you really get a scene. Um, I love what Fred Craddock said in his chem- uh, uh, commentary. He said, Pentecost, that's what they're waiting for, completes Easter just like Easter completes Good Friday. Don't you like that? Oh, Thinking yeah. about it like, like that? that. Mm-hmm. He said, a church without Pentecost cannot shout he is, ridden long en- he is risen long enough to survive the post-Easter slump. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> coming down from the excitement of the empty right. tomb. If there wasn't this energy that we already feel at the beginning of Luke, for what's coming next with the arrival of the Holy Spirit, we would just go back to our not we go get in a fishing boat and you know right. go fish. So this this energy, God at work in a whole different way. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that we have this this bookend mm-hmm. of transitions in Luke and then Luke moving into Acts, and I love. I really think that the disciples needed forty days. At yeah, least. At least. <laughs> Jesus was propping them up right. for 40 days. Okay, mm-hmm. they don't understand this. Okay, now I'm going to go teach them a lesson. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was getting them ready right. t- to be chapter the next mm-hmm. chapter. Yeah, to carry but that message. I don't think he could have done that in 24 hours. No. That's why they seem so confused and what and huh and what. <laughs> right. And we're still yeah, working and, on it. I mean, we're still right, we're we, still trying to figure out how to best continue to tell that story and understand. We have a couple minutes left. I'm just curious, uh, Kara, if you've had any uh, experience with children asking questions about the Good resurrection question. or yeah, how think, it affects children. I, you know, there's an interesting kind of dichotomy in the Easter story for children because when you read it, and I believe that, you know, children, it's okay to expose children to the Easter story, but Jesus dies a really awful death. Um, I would want to push kids that happened and Jesus died, and then let's oh, look at let's the resurrection. To, let's move to the resurrection. You wouldn't wait to. Uh, I mean, I mean, yes, I think we, I think we, we talk about that. And we understand that, but, but the power of of the 
Easter story is that Jesus lives. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, but most of the conversations <clears throat> that kids have questions about is, or are, you know, how did Jesus die? Why, you know, that's just so, it's such a hard thing to understand. Um, and for kids that are trying to understand death and what that looks like and to say, well, Jesus died, but, but it changed things for everyone. So no, you know, none of us really. That wasn't the that, end of yeah, the story. Yeah, that's not the end of the story. Let's, let's, yes, that happened. Um, but let's really look three days later at, at the amazing, you know, gift that we have through Mm-hmm. Jesus resurrection. And so those are kind of the stories. Um, on Palm Sunday, a butterfly flew like right through our group when we were outside oh, doing cool. children's worship. And, and we took that moment to tell, to talk about butterflies and, you know, and say, you know what, Easter's coming, but this is a beautiful time to tell an Easter story and that transformation that happens in a butterfly in the new life. So trying to continue to look at things growing, things changing, that idea that all things are made new, I think is a really great way to talk with kids about that. And so, but oftentimes, I mean, honestly, the questions are about how Jesus died. Mm -hmm. And so naming that and affirming that, but, and I think for all of us to, to recognize that, but to really move to, Jesus didn't show up on the road and say, well, you know, do you all know how horrible that was? I mean, (laughs) when the people were talking, I mean, it was, it was, where are we going from now, here? What's, what's, yeah, what's next? Moving, what's what is the next forward? part of the story? That. And so the I think hope that that's of the next yeah, thing. What is the hope of this? Of this? So that's kind of where we're Fantastic. Going. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this formation video or podcast or however you are however. experiencing formation. <laughs> uh, we hope you have a wonderful Easter and we will see you or you will hear us <laughs> next week uh, when we finish up the Gospel of Nobodies. Have a great week. Easter blessings.